uh, 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 watch out, keep watching watch. for some things that's going to hinder worship on Sunday morning. So Paul said, just, just be on guard. But not only that, he said, you got to stand firm. All right. Uh, steadfast. So while you're upstanding, you can't, can't watch nobody sitting down. Right. All right. As you're standing, you got to know what's going on in the pews. Right. Paul told them to stand, not sit down, and not allow some of these practices that was going on in the church to keep on going. He told them to stand up to the corruption, stand up to everything that ungodliness. Yeah. Don't waver. Don't move. Just Stand. Yes, and he said, stand firm on the word of God. And I, and I believe it's true today. Ushers, you got to keep on standing. Yes. While you're serving, keep on standing. Yes. The fact that I know that trying to keep worship, the, the order of service, it, it is a difficult job. Yes. Oh, come on, somebody. Yes. The, the fact that uh, you've got to stay on guard and you can be effective while you're standing. You know, when you're standing, you can see some things. All right. If you ever had to usher before, you can, you can survey the land. You can see what's going on. You can see somebody who might need some help or you can reach out. But if you're sitting down, you can't see very much. Right. Right. So Paul said, don't take none of this sitting down. The right. usher can help somebody when they're hurting. They can help somebody who is Thirsty, yes, but yes. Paul also told them, "You don't have to stand on your own. Uh, stand on your own. Yes. You don't have to stand on your own strength." He said to stand firm in the faith. Yes. I, I like this because it's our faith in God. It's your faith in God. That's why you can stand. Yes. And so, no matter what your circumstances is like, no matter what our circumstances is, even when we cannot see our way, us just I know it gets difficult dealing with us sometimes, yes. and sometimes you might lose patience. Sometimes you might get upset and angry on the inside, but you can't say it. Y'all right. never rushed it before. You have to be able to stand. And so Paul was telling me, even when you see some things that's not right, you can't waver. You cannot move. You have to stand your post. Uh, I haven't seen ushers moving around throughout the sanctuary. I see them standing on their post. They're watching and they're standing, but this is how you got to stand. You got to stand in faith. Stand trusting God, knowing that uh, everything is going to be all right. The fact that it says in faith, sometimes when you're standing and your knees is hurting, you don't know how you're going to make it through your 10 or 15 minutes through your rotation. You don't know how you're going to make it. You have to just have faith in God that everything is going to be all right. You can't see it. The medicine's wearing off, but you know that faith is a suck. Come on, somebody. Have you talked to one of your ushers yes, before? Sir. Talk to your ushers. There's some days they're in pain. Yeah. But yet they're standing. And the, and the Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, yes. evidence of things not seen. Yes. Just, just in case, if, if that's not good enough, can I give you some more examples of folks who right. stood firm in yes, the faith, who was steadfast and immovable? Oh, yeah. The Bible says, by faith, Noah prepared an ark. By faith, Sarah received strength to conceive a son. Enoch did not see death. Abraham journeyed to the promised land. By faith, Isaac was blessed with Jacob. By faith, Moses passed through the Red Sea. By faith, Rahab's family was saved. And by faith, David defeated Goliath. I'm just trying to say, usher, stand firm in the faith. And so while you're, while you're standing, be watchful. Be on guard. Stand firm. Stand, stand, stand and don't move. But also I understand that ushering, you have to be courageous. Never ushered before. You have to be strong. King James says that you ought to quit. It says quit, verse 13, quit you like men. Uh, which in the Greek just means it's one word. It says conduct oneself in a manly, in a, in a, in a ladylike manner, in a courageous way. And so Paul is instructing the believers at Corinth. Now that you've been watchful, you've been standing up against some of this ungodliness, act like men and women ought to act. Be strong against the wiles of the devil. Be strong. Don't be scared of folks who's spreading uh, not the gospel, but the false gospel. Don't be afraid of the unbelievers. Don't be afraid against those who are corrupting the city of Corinth. There were some folks who was out there just corrupted, just causing havoc. Oh, 
We don't got those at Pleasant Green. But in other churches, y'all know there's some folks inside of the church that cause most of the problems. Yes, sir. Y'all okay, not at Pleasant Green. We don't have, we're blessed not to have them kind of folks in Pleasant Green Baptist Church. But Paul is encouraging that you got to be strong and courageous uh, because you have the word to be your strength. And so, ushers, let me encourage you today. Don't be afraid. Because you're serving God. Yeah. Don't be afraid because God will take care of you. Yeah. I, I, I know ushering is a dangerous job nowadays. Yeah. But not like no, not like when we was growing up. Yeah. Tell, not like when we had to usher. Yeah. Our fear, it was dangerous because we was afraid of the leaders. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. See, see, you have to understand. You have to understand some things that you got to be courageous. To be an usher nowadays. The fact that it, uh, we were taught that it was important to serve others. If, if, if we didn't stand to see uh, young folks, y'all got it good. Because when we grew up ushering, I'm going to get to the believers. I'm going to get to y'all in a second. But but to the ushers, you got to understand, growing up, Brother Meeks, we stood in the middle. You remember we had two of us right in the middle? Well, remember that two on the side? Two at the door, and your back could not touch the wall. You could not touch the end of the pew. Because there was there was some ushers uh, that, that that knew how to handle things. Ushers had full authority. Uh, sister Be to heal and Sister Pittman and, and and there was a young sister Austin and there was Sister Louise Henderson and Sister Lenny Edmonds. They had full authority, and so usher was dangerous. We had to be courageous. We had to be courageous. But now it's, it's turned on us. It, it, it's different now. Usher is dangerous for the usher. Come on, somebody. It's dangerous because now the ushers have to deal with us. We, we, it's dangerous in the pews because ushers don't know what to expect when they ask somebody to scoot over. They, they don't know what to expect when they ask you to take the gum out your mouth. They don't know what to expect when they ask you to scoot down or ask you to be quiet or they ask you to put your device away. It's dangerous being an usher. Ushers have to be courageous. And it's, it's sad, but it's true. And I, I see y'all. I'm a metal. I see you on Sunday when the usher asks you to scoot down. Oh, Lord. Because we have our favorite seat, Sister Claxton. Yes, sir. So when Sister Parks or Sister Austin or Sister Smith, Sister Brent ask you to school down, it's dangerous. Because they don't know how they're going to respond. Uh, it's true. Have you ushered before? And so even to the believer, we have to be courageous. We have to be strong when we're serving the Lord. The enemy will do whatever he can to get you soft, to get you off track, and allow you to lose focus. And he knows, even, even the enemy knows after serving a while, you're going to get weak sometimes. Standing on your feet all, you know, two, three hours, you're going to get weak sometimes. Even Jesus took a break. The fact that even sometimes you're ushering, you're not always on your A-game. I'm sure, ushers, there's some times where you, you felt like not ushering anymore. There was somebody last week who, when you walked into the sanctuary, you said good morning and they didn't say anything back. I'm sure there were some mornings when you smiled and greeted somebody, but yet they didn't greet you back. I'm sure you opened up a door for somebody, but yet they didn't say thank you. You gave somebody some water, but they didn't say thank you. I, I understand that sometimes you want to just throw in the tap. You get, come on, somebody. Even as the believer. I, I, let me, let me, let me, can I, just, just this past Thursday, um, at a basketball game, it, it deals with the text, it reminds me because, uh, as we're playing the game of basketball, uh, there was a situation in, in, in the game where the other team was, the enemy was so frustrated that they began to, they began to foul our players very hard. It, it, the enemy began to attack because we were we were a little bit more points on the scoreboard. And there was a time when the enemy, this particular player, he was getting banged 
ended up on the inside and they was talking trash to him and, and hating on him and doing everything that they could do to him. But yet he kept playing right through the game. Uh, he scored the basket, made a three-point play.